This is something that has just popped up on my feed today. Data center in the shed reduces energy bills to £40. And this looks really interesting. Basically, there's a company that have installed a data center home server. Well, not a home server, but a server set up in this guy's house. And there are more than 500 mini computers processing data. And the heat that it generates, they're using that to heat this couple's house. House in Essex, which is southern England. And uh, they're the first people in the country to trial a scheme that sees them heat their home using a data center in their garden shed. So if you've got a garden shed or a garden, um, this is really cool. So they were paying £375 a month for the energy bills, which is quite a lot. Um, it's probably, I think they, it, reading this, it sounds like they were having to heat the house all the time because of illness. Um, this is on BBC News website and it's the Shield Project, which is powered, part of UK Power Network Shield Project, Heat Hub developed by Thermify. And it's a new way for low-income households to transition to net zero. So um, although it's got a power, and someone's going to be paying for the electricity to power this system. Uh, they've got solar panels and a battery put in. And this is, it uh, looks like their, sh oh no, is this a shed? Is this a shed? Which bit is their shed? Which is their house? Um... I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, read this on the BBC News. This is one of the modules and it contains up to 60, 56 Raspberry Pi computers. And you know how small Raspberry Pis are. Um, the project will see 50 homes get heat hubs. So it's, I guess it's like a distributed network of servers and computers instead of them all being in one place why not put them in people's houses and then the heat that it generates can go and heat the house um so that's really cool <laughs> one is swimming pool is being warmed by a washing machine sized digital boiler um Data centers are being used to heat. Um, a hospital is a plan. I'm not sure. I had a look on YouTube. I couldn't find any information about this on there. But it makes a lot of sense. You know, computers are becoming more and more essential. And we are consuming data and processing power more and more with AI, etc. And so why not use some of the heat generated to heat homes, houses, hospitals, swimming pools? Oh, this is to do with um, the swimming pool, I think. Yeah, this is to do with um, warm water is pumped from data rack to heat exchanges in the lake then the cooled water is sent back inside in a closed loop so they're not using chemicals in this system but yeah let's have a look at um, Shield the company or UK Power Networks the company behind this and so it started in March 2023 and designed to help people transition to net zero for low-income residents including those in social housing and other tenures I guess there are some you know considerations there and I guess it can help heat people's houses peer-to-peer -peer energy trading as part of a smart local energy system. Solar panels, battery storage, heat hub, distributed cloud computing. 
And I guess as well, using Raspberry Pis, they're quite low power to begin with. So it's not like they're putting in huge power hungry machines into people's homes because that could cause problems with, you know, electricity and, you know, they need better power supplies. But in terms of uh, Raspberry Pis, they're quite low power. So you can plug it into a home power system without necessarily worrying, I guess. But yeah, looks very interesting. And, you know, it's something we've probably done ourselves with our computers. You know, you've got a computer in a room. If you leave it on, that room's going to be warmer than the other rooms in your house. Be interesting to see more information about this system, the setup and how it works. Let's see if I can find a video. So the video on this shield website is private i have to sign in to watch that's a bit of a shame they could have probably fixed that before being mentioned on bbc news but uh, let's see if this takes us anywhere no it's just about different things so they're in beta phase shield will conduct a phased trial across up to 300 households um which is interesting so you know this is a uk power network who are the people using the distributed computing power? You know, what, what's that about? Um, if there's more information somewhere, let me know. This is the Thermify website, thermify.cloud. And what if there was a new kind of data center that could directly warm homes and heat hot water instead of a gas boiler? Reuse the energy from cloud computing no downside apparently so let's have a look at this video see if it plays in today's economy energy costs regardless of the source of that energy are going through the roof it's between inflation global pandemics global socioeconomic issues that are going on the price for energy has skyrocketed what Thermify does is allow us to put a heater in a house that's an electric heater, but it does more than just take electricity and convert it to heat. So we have cloud compute customers that need to process a lot of data. This runs on computers that we have in a decentralized data center solution. These go into people's homes. Our carbon footprint is 70% smaller than a traditional data center is. The waste product is pure heat. So we capture that heat and use that to heat. So it's talking about um, using this to heat people's homes. I mean, they must have quite a lot of um, systems in there. Um, 500 mini computers, it said in the other article. So that's quite a lot of computing power. Heat these people's homes. We feed into a circular economy. That allows Thermify to use energy twice and makes us the smart green solution. Heat Hub in many situations is a plug and play replacement. Take the boiler off your wall, install a heat hub. We can then heat your house and supply you with hot water, just like your boiler does today. The average home has gone from costing 600 pounds a year to costing 2,000 pounds a year to heat. We are targeting. Um, I'd say that's probably true for some houses. Um, I think, you know, you're looking at about 1,200 pounds for gas and electricity combined. So yeah, electricity costs and heating costs, gas have gone up a lot. In 2,500 pounds per unit for a standard three bedroom house, there will be a 500 pound one off installation fee and a subscription for heat of only 50 pounds per month. Our aim is to reduce fuel poverty in the UK. When people have to choose between heating and eating, we are able to subsidize those costs. I guess the £500 upfront fee for this is probably something that maybe the people he's talking about, um, if you can't afford, you know, if you are making the choice between heating your house and buying food to eat, you can't afford £500 for this system. You know, that's not likely to be money you have lying around. Um, but not that I'm saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that maybe they could work on reducing that cost or some kind of payment system where you get the system for free and then you pay off that £500, you know, later on or something. 
reducing them to 25 pounds a month, or in extreme situations, we can provide heat for free. That bit sounds good. Um, so is any of this on YouTube? I think it's on Vimeo again. Let's have a look. Heat Hub for Home. Wonder what kind of internet connection it needs or what the sort of requirements are. Sounds really good. Um, if I get more information, I'll post a follow up or post a comment. But this is just like, yeah, just discovered it today. Thought it'd be really interesting to have a look at. And yeah, doesn't seem to be much on YouTube about it. So yeah, sounds really cool. Um, Okay, there's an article on the register. Struggling to heat your home. How about 500 Raspberry Pi units? That's quite a big box they've got there. You know, not everyone's going to have that space in their house. And if you rent, for example, are you going to be allowed to install one of these in your house if you don't own the property? Um, but yeah, worth reading some of these articles. Um, let's have a quick look at the register. See if it takes us there. Yep. It does. Not many pictures and be interesting to see how it's configured inside there from a hardware point of view. But looks very cool. Thanks for watching. See you in another video.